What's going on, family? This is Scrapbook Boxing Museum of the Forgotten Fisticuff Series. Let's continue to examine 100 years of world championship fights. May 22, 1931. Featherweight champion Bat Battalino defeats former Olympian and flyweight champion Fidel La Barba. New York's Madison Square Garden, 15 rounds. That was some fight because most of the fans had felt that Fidel La Barba would pull it off. But battling Ballino would prove the difference. Now, May 27, 1931, Hall of Fame future two-time welterweight champion, the babyface assassin, Jimmy McLaurin defeats the Fargo Express Billy Patrol. Now, McLaurin is to your left and Patrol is to your right. Fought in 10 rounds, New York's Madison Square Garden. Now, in this fight, McLaurin was 23 years old. He stood five foot six inches. He was a welterweight and had a 67 inch reach. Came into the ring with a fighting record of 46, seven wins, seven losses, three draws, and 16 knockouts. That's 47 wins, seven losses, three draws, and 16 knockouts. As for Billy Patrol, he was 26 years old. He stood five foot seven inches. He was a lightweight and had a 70 inch reach. He walked into the ring with a career record of 112 wins. 21 losses, 14 draws, and 59 by the knockout rule. Now, between November 11th, 1929 and November 21st, 1930, he'd be in the ring with Sammy Mendel, November 29th, 1929. He would defeat him. Ruby Goldstein, December 13th, 1929. Sammy Mandel, March 1st, 1930. Young Jack Thompson, March 28th, 1930. And he would defeat him. Now, between November 21st, 1930 and April 10th, 1931, being in a ring with Jimmy McLaurin, November 21st, 1930, he would defeat him. He would also defeat him November 21st, 1930. Jackie Moore, King Tut, fought him twice, one win and one loss. Now, let's take a look at a fight between Billy Patrol and Barney Ross. Now, Fargo Express is facing Barney Ross. Barney Ross is on your left. And the Fargo Express Billy Patrol is to your right. The miglior scelta di tempo da parte di Ross che fa la differenza. Now, if you look at Barney Ross, he's moving to his left. And Patrol is staying on him the whole time. That's the whole idea. He's still mixing up his punches and he throw them on up and down. Consistent punching, nonstop, by Billy Patrol. And Billy Patrol is really a lightweight. He was originally a featherweight. And Barney Ross was a lightweight, moving up to the welterweight division. But as you can see here, Barney Ross is throwing consistent right hands and he's moving up with his jab. Everything follows the jab. Billy Patrol is mastering his hooks because he realized that Barney Ross's right hand is consistently down every time he throws his right hand. And that's what he's concentrating on as Billy Patrol. Now, a mistake the Fargo Express is making right now. When a referee pushes away Barney Ross, Billy Patrol is to get right back on him consistently, breaking up that rhythm. But that's not happening right now. And this would be the downfall in the fight for Billy Patrol. He's not really taking control, he's just following the moves of Barney Ross. Barney Ross is dictating the fight. Billy Patrol is following his actions. But Billy Patrol is one of the most devastating body punches in boxing history. And if you can look at what Barney Ross is doing, he is preventing Billy Patrol from landing those body punches. Head movement, distance, jab, pushing him off, frustrating him. This is the last round. 
Bonnie Ross constantly stays in the middle of the ring and he's popping a jab. What Billy Patrol should be doing is he should be putting pressure on him. No, he just got hit with triple F hooks. Did the Fargo Express Billy Patrol. Good head movement by Bonnie Ross. Oh, beautiful uppercut left hook combination. One, two down the pipe. At this point, he has Billy Patrol completely tamed. Oh my God, what a beautiful left hook that was by Bonnie Ross. Another beautiful left hook. Oh, uppercut left hook combinations all day. The other problem Patrol is having is he's standing right in front of Bonnie Ross. He's not giving any angles and he's not putting pressure on him. If you're not going to put pressure on your man, you cannot stand in front of him. Beautiful combinations by Bonnie Ross. And we'll be talking about Bonnie Ross later on in this series. Where do you see his wars with Jimmy McLaurin in? Oh, beautiful combinations by Bonnie Ross. Billy Patrol is standing straight up. That's another mistake he is making. That's because of fatigue. Now let's move on to another championship fight. July 2nd, 1931. Heavyweight champion Black Ulan, Max Mellon, knocks out Lawrence Young Stribling, 15 rounds, and Cleveland to retain his heavyweight championship belt. Now that would be the only time that Young Shipman would be knocked out in 255 fights. Max Melling was known as the Black Eulin. And he got that title when he faced Jack Sharkey in 1930. He was hit with a low blow. And he was declared the champion. Now he would be stripped from the New York sack of the heavyweight version of that title because he didn't give... Jack Sharkey return go immediately. But he would face Young Shribbling in 1931. And he would eventually knock out Young Shribbling later on in the round. Just take a look at that fight between Max Schmeling and Young Shribbling. July 2nd, 1931. Entering the ring to make the first title defense of his newly won heavyweight championship. Challenger Young Stribling shakes hands with Max and then walks back to his corner. Schmeling is asked by the photographers to walk across the ring and pose with Stribling for the still cameras. Max obligingly does just what the newsmen request. Schmeling shakes hands with light heavyweight champion Tommy Lochran as the photographers snap away. In round one, Schmeling, with back to camera, starts off carrying the fight to his challenger. Schmeling, now to your left, won the heavyweight title one year ago as a result of a low blow landed by Jack Sharkey. As Max sat on his stool in agonizing pain, he was declared champion, which was the first time that the heavyweight title had ever been won as a result of a low blow. Even though Max is the heavyweight champion of the world, Stribling, now to your left, has had a great deal more professional experience than the champion. Stribling turned professional when he was only 17 years old back in 1921. His real name is William Lawrence Stribling, but he was very quickly nicknamed Young and has been fighting under that nickname ever since.
You'll see Max press forward and miss a tremendous right to the head. That's the punch Schmeling usually finishes his man with. It's his right-hand bomb that's taken him up the heavyweight ladder. Schmelling's, and Max now is leading on points. Now eventually, Max Schmelling will knock out Young Stribling with a beautiful right hand. It's all Schmelling here in round 13, and as the round ends, it appears that Stribling can only win by a knockout. Eighth and final round, the 14th, was again all Schmelling as he continued to batter Stribling to both head and body. Here in round 15, Max is pouring it up. Watch closely as Schmelling lands a smashing right to the jaw and Stribling goes down. Here's that crushing right to the jaw in slow motion. The first knockdown of the fight here in the final 15th round. As Schmelling turns to go to a neutral corner, referee George Blake steps in to pick up the count. As Tribling lies on the floor, trying to gather himself, the referee's count reaches nine as Tribling drags himself... But George Blake is the same referee. Blake decides that Tribling has had enough and stops... That caused the draw between Seferino Garcia and Henry Armstrong in 1940. With just 25 seconds left in this championship fight, Schmelling scores a sudden and dramatic knockout victory over young Tribling. Max Schmelling successfully defends his world's heavyweight championship on July 3rd, 1931. Wednesday, July 15th, 1931. Kid Chocolate, the Cuban Bong Bong, knocks out Philadelphia's junior lightweight champion, Benny Bass, Shy Park, Philadelphia. Now, Kid Chocolate was 21 years old. He stood 5 foot 6 inches. He was a featherweight. Had a reach of 65 inches and a record of 61 wins. Three losses, one draw, and 32 knockouts. As for Benny Bass, he was 27 years old. He stood five foot one and a half inches and had a 64 inch reach. He was a junior lightweight. He walked into the ring weighing 142 pounds. And he had 138 wins, 27 losses, seven draws, and 56 knockouts. He defeated Baltimore. 140 pounds, Buster Brown. Now, Buster Brown had a rank, uh, fighting record, excuse me, of 66 wins, 37 losses. He was in a ring with Pete Nebo two times and defeated him twice. Johnny Farr, three wins. He drew with Tommy Paul. Lou Feldman. He was in the ring with Davy Abad. Nettie Shea. December 9th, 1932. He defeated Fidel Barber, 14,000 in the crowd. It was for the New York SAC World Junior Lightweight Championship belt. Now, who was Kid Chocolate? He was known as the Cuban Bong Bong. He was born January 6, 1910, Havana, Cuba. He died August 8th, 1988. He was 78 years of age at the time of his death, and he would reside in Havana, Cuba. I had the pleasure of meeting Kid Chocolate. He died August 8th, 1988. Wow, seems like yesterday. He stood five foot six inches. He was a featherweight and had a 65 inch reach. He had over 155 bouts. He won 136 fights, had over 100 amateur fights, undefeated. He had 52 knockouts. Phenomenal fighter Kid Chocolate was. He's obviously to your right and you had Benny Bass to your left. Kid Chocolate would become champion in the junior lightweight division. Phenomenal fight that was between Benny Bass Kid Chocolate on the night of Wednesday, July 15th. 
1931. July 22nd, 1931. World Middleweight Champion, Mickey Walker, gives up the belt in refusal to face the colored world middleweight champion, Harlem Thunderbolt, Harry Smith. He would go up and eventually meet Jacqueline Malone. Mickey Walker goes 15 rounds. Boston Gob, Jack Sharkey. He overcame a cut over his left eye. Jack Sharkey would go on and defeat Max Schmeling and become the heavyweight champion of the world. Thursday, July 23rd, 1931. Battling Battlino remains the featherweight champion of the world with a victory over Freddie Miller. 10 rounds, Cincinnati, Ohio. For the NBA featherweight championship belt, referee was Lou Bowman. Battalino was 23 years old. He stood five foot five and a half inches. He was a featherweight with a 65 inch reach. Walked into the ring with a record of 33 wins, 10 losses, two draws. As for Freddie Miller, he was 20 years old. Stood five foot five inches. He was a southpaw. Had a record of 86 wins, four losses, three draws, and 19 knockouts. Now, who was Freddie Miller? For one, he is to your left. Pat Ballino is to your right. Freddie Miller's name was Frederick M. Miller. He was born April 3rd, 1911, Cincinnati, Ohio. Died May 8th, 1962 in Cincinnati, Ohio. He stood five foot five inches. He was a southpaw featherweight. Fought from 1927 to 1940. Had a record of 221 total bouts, 184 wins, 45 knockouts, and 29 losses. He would win a California State Featherweight Championship belt, the NBA Featherweight Championship belt, and the World Featherweight Championship belt. Very good fighter was Freddie Miller. But he got in the ring with Bat Battalino on the night of Thursday, July 23rd, 1931 for the NBA Featherweight Championship belt. July 4th, Polino Escadon defeats Max Bear. 20 rounds, 1931. August 5th, 1931, Maxie Rosenblum defeats Jimmy Slattery, 15 rounds. Brooklyn, New York, the light heavyweight championship belt. Maxie Rosenblum had well over 200 fights, close to 300 fights. Had something like 12 knockouts. They called him Slappy Maxi. But he had a hell of a record. You're looking at Max C. Rosenblum. Wound up becoming an actor towards the end of his career. So Max C. Rosenblum defends his light heavyweight championship belt. August 5th, against Jimmy Slattery, Brooklyn, New York. August 20th, 1931, Jimmy McLaurin defeats Billy Patrol once again, 10 rounds in New York. September 10th, Tony Canzanieri defeats Jackie Kidbird, 15 rounds in New York. He retains his lightweight and junior welterweight championship belt. September 17th, 1931, Marvin Hart, former heavyweight champion, dies at the age of 55, Fern Creek in Kentucky.
October 12, 1931. Jack Sharkey defeats Primo Carnera, 15 rounds, in Brooklyn, New York. Jack Sharkey's to your left and Primo Carnera is to your right. And now it's the best in the world. 